Welcome back to the Buds of the Box podcast. Before we get started, make sure to uh, check out the giveaway details below. Enter the giveaway. All you have to do is like, subscribe, comment, comment which player you want on a jersey, and you'll be entered to win a jersey of that player. And now the Leafs versus Jets game. Leafs win 3-1 to one in a huge, huge game for both teams. Whichever team won would take first place in North Division, and the Leafs did not disappoint. They won the game 3-1, and they got off to a quick start. Matthews, five minutes in, um, a great play by Hyman. Um, we're going to get into that uh, for sure. My, uh, Hyman drives the net from a pass from Marner. Great play to keep it in. Hyman was all over the place this game. Drives the net, and Matthews gets the juicy rebound in front. Perfect goal. Um, not even six minutes later, uh, Hyman scores from Matthews and Marner. Great play from Marner. He did a little bit of an inside toe drag, pass it to Matthews back door. I honestly thought that was like an insane pass. Like nobody saw Matthews there back door and makes an amazing play. He, he unfortunately hits the post. I thought that was his goal, but, but Hyman gets it, gets it back there. Um, I mean, we were talking, me and Feli were talking about Hyman before the game. What are your thoughts, Feli? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think Hyman, um, Hyman's been playing great, I, um, just all around. Like I was saying to uh, to Eric earlier on FaceTime, we were talking, and um, I said there's there's really no one else in the league like Zach Hyman. There's one Zach Hyman in the NHL. You know, you can't say that about every player. You know, there's, there's multiple Mitch Marners, you know, um, maybe not the same – like obviously not the same exact player but you know someone like Kane or like you know even McDavid or or McKinnon are kind of like Marner you know playmakers um Matthews is kind of you know he's like um Ovechkin or whatever but there's really one Zach Hyman in the NHL like no one really has the same work ethic as him so I, I just think he's really valuable to to the Leafs because there's one of him like there's no other guy that plays like that that can especially what he's been doing this year is scoring goals and making plays like the, that play he made on the first goal was unbelievable. So, um, you know, he drove the net and good things happen when you drive the net. So. Yeah. And I mean, he's one of the most versatile players in the league. He can get in the corners. He can play with superstars. He can play on the fourth line, third line, penalty kill, power play, anything you want him to do. So exactly. we, we got a gem there. Um, and uh, one thing I noticed right before um, Hyman's goal was actually, they did put Nylander, JT, Matthews, and Marners to start the power play. Did you guys have any th thoughts on that? Yeah, finally. It's about time. I mean, they didn't do anything, but to, to every other team puts – why not? Like, why not put all your stars on one power play? It doesn't make any sense not to. It just makes it that much more threatening. Well, well, the uh, thing yeah. is – oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jude. No, no, you go. Okay, well, I was just going to break up a stat. Um regardless of what, who they put on, they're struggling right now on the power play. They're, they've been 0 for 21 in their past nine games. So. Yeah, they've been horrible. But, I mean, they've also had two power plays for most of the last nine games. They, they haven't really been putting the main guys together, which doesn't make any sense. But well, I it guess it was awful want... tonight. Well, because usually, though, usually it's, um, you know, one power play is out there for longer. So if Tavares's group is out there, and they're out there for a minute 20. Then there's a change, which means the puck is exiting the zone. The next group has to come back out and have like 25 seconds or less on power play. So it doesn't make any sense. But um, yeah, they've been struggling either way. It's just you you have to capitalize on power plays to win games. So. Dude, were you going to say something? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say like right when I saw them, I just thought of Feli. Like he's – He's very keen on the on the stack the one power play so and and I, I just noticed right away that's what we did clearly it's not um it's not it's not in our favor right now but hopefully soon yeah I mean the more the more penalties the other team gets the more chances the Leafs will have to break that 0 and 21 start um, but overall the Leafs actually they dominated that period um, I believe the shots were like 14 to six going into the second so. If they, I mean, they don't need their power play really if they're playing that well five on five. So, yeah, and that that wraps up the first period. The second period, I mean, at the end of the first, you knew the Jets were not going to play the same. They were they're definitely going to come out stronger in the second, and and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Jets put the pressure on. Leafs played great defense, um, but they struggled to create that offense. Um, but like 
all that all that um that defense that they did led to Brody's penalty. Do you guys see that? The stick to the face on Stasny, his tooth popped out. All that. Yeah, stuff. that was weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just an unfortunate play. There was uh, no blood or anything either. Oh no, there was there was blood. I didn't see blood. Um, his tooth popped out, so there had to be blood. Yeah, there was check. Well, it was a fake tooth. It doesn't matter. The announcer was saying it was fake. Still, I didn't see blood. He he spit out. He spit. He grabbed. He went like that, and there was, I saw blood. Oh okay. Yeah, um, so Brody get, got that double minor, but it worked out in the Leafs' favor, kind of. Uh, three minutes left in the period. Leafs were playing a great penalty kill up, um, up until this point, and then it got even better. Mikheyev, I mean, we, we always praise Mikheyev on this podcast. I mean, he's, he's so versatile. He can play on the penalty kill so well, and he has that speed that he, he, he has like at least like one breakaway chance a game. Um, gets it up to Kerfoot. Kerfoot's gone, kind of does like some little fake stick handle and roofs it upstairs. Hellbuck has no chance. Um, Kerfoot played an amazing game today. I don't know. I don't know if you guys noticed or anything, but he was he was really really good today. He hasn't been noticeable in the past couple of games, so yeah, it was well, good think... to see because his his trade value. Yeah, so I think he's been <laughs> podcast. He's been listening to a few of Felly's takes, so. He knew he had to uh, up his game because Galchenyuk's taking his spot there. Mm -hmm. uh, who I also thought was looking, uh, just me personally, I thought he was looking dangerous on the power play. He wasn't making, like, I saw he made a few good plays to keep the puck alive and, and in our possession. Like, he wasn't he wasn't scoring, obviously. But, like, he, he just, he looks scary on that power play. And, like, I'm excited. He's like, he's like, he's like, look at older, littler Matthews. You know what I mean? So, like, they play similar. Actually, actually that, that's actually so true. Because sometimes when I see him skate, um, just the way, like, he has a center of gravity and his legs are, like, yeah. wide when he's skating, it's, it looks like Matthews yeah. skating. It's weird. I'm like, wait, Matthews looks kind of small. And then I'm like, oh, wait, that's still tenuous. And they set up identical on the park. You're right. You're right. I've actually gotten that mistake a couple, a couple of times. Well, I mean... That's that's some good praise for Kerfoot looking like Matthews on the ice. I I no, take that any no, day. No, Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk. Sorry, I'm messing up all the. Not okay. Here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, you're out. You're, you're you're out of the buds in the box. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, the great penalty kill didn't last very long. Uh, Josh Morrissey scores a goal off a Stasny screen, and yeah. Jets get on the board uh, from Brody's. It was the first penalty, so then they also had to kill another two minutes, which they they actually did really well on that one. Um, and that yeah. that basically wrapped up the second period. Kind of a back and forth game. Leafs struggled to get shots, um, but they played great defense. Um, third period. And sorry, Campbell what was that? plays well. Campbell plays well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Campbell That's played the game. game. Yeah, the Jets started picking up the shots in the third. Campbell had how many how many saves? Uh, it was that it was just under 30, I think. Yeah, I think okay, it was like so 20, 29. 29, 28, something like that. He played amazing. Um, and yeah, I mean, in the third period, the Leafs kind of went into defensive mode, they didn't really have any offensive chances, I would say. I mean, Galchenyuk, he was sniffing around the net a lot. Same with that Tavares and Nylander line, yeah. Um, and and um, like we talk about on this podcast, Campbell made. A couple big saves to keep the game 3-1 and that's what you need to win a game but also something that i just noticed about campbell um just in general he's he's an amazing goalie obviously and um the one thing i think is he just plays much better with rest so he had three days off instead of one because he didn't play on monday so he played Saturday, didn't play Monday, and then played today. So I think if we're just talking about, you know, next year and the coming whatever, um, you can't really – from what it looks like, he needs another guy that can go in if, if they have games that are a little bit close together. Like, he needs, he needs breaks. Um, he's not the type of goalie that can play, like, every other game or every other day. It seems like because even in Edmonton, he was playing. He played, I think, Thursday and then Saturday, and he looked a bit off on Saturday. 
So that I don't know. That's just kind of what I'm gathering from it is if the Leafs go into next year without Anderson, then they're going to need someone that is that it's not Hutchinson. That's not going to work. And Campbell can't take on a, a 80, 20 load. So a tandem. Is yeah. That he needs someone, someone that can play 40% of the games. The Leafs need someone like, like, so that's what I'm thinking just from watching him play today, just how much better he was than he was on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I mean, regardless, he still, still goes, moves to seven and zero, um, and he, he, didn't he play back-to-back games? He, he um, did, but that was, I think, uh, Thursday to Saturday. And I'm saying I don't think he played as well on uh, Saturday as he did today. That was the overtime win against Edmonton. Yeah, so they were down, you know, the, the dry side of his goal was obviously was unstoppable, but there were a couple of ones that he should have had, so. The nurse yeah. one. The nurse one, definitely. But I just think that he, he plays better when he's got some sort of support uh, – for, for some games that he he's also pretty fragile so anyways yeah I, I mean I I haven't been a hundred percent on board with this Campbell thing because it's obviously still a sample size so I mean you can go 7 0 and then lose your next seven games still right um but and and also he hasn't really been tested I mean you you watch those games he makes good saves but you know most of them aren't his, his bread basket yeah but uh, I mean well, no, he made some pretty good saves. Oh yeah, I, I was go- yeah, I was gonna say this game. He he really showed me. You know, he's a good goalie. He's solid. Um, and yeah, Jude, from a goalie's perspective. What, well, what I was say? gonna say a good player can receive a bad pass. That's what makes them a good player. And a good goalie can make a good shot make make it look easy, which is what he does well. Anderson constantly looks shaky every every single shot. Like Felly said, he'd hold his breath. You 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 wouldn't know if. If this next one changes the Leafs' fate, if if this or something like that, Campbell, he's always square. Even even with that Shifley, when Shifley missed the net by like forty feet in that first power play, that yeah. was, Campbell was there. Like as much as Craig Simpson wants to go off about oh Shifley this Shifley, like that like Campbell was there. That was Campbell's stop because he's just like he reads the play very well and he's always in position. And when you when you're in position with the puck, your chest is always in front of the puck. So if it's a great shot, it's going to go into your chest. And even even like that Shifley shot at the end of the game, that was an incredible save to keep it at a 3-1 game. Craig Simpson is the worst. <laughs> that guy, honestly, he just – he's such a Leaf hater. It's unbelievable that he's announcing every single game. He's un- – like, I, I just oh, – oh, my God, that guy sucks. And Chris <laughs> Cuthbert is not better at all. Well, my dad hates Chris Cuthbert. <laughs> did, did you guys see the the Boston when I think it was Bergeron got tripped? Yeah, well, those Boston announcers are like they're the most biased announcers in the. Pool. They're the most biased, you know, but like it's the Boston network, so like it's it's uh you know it's it's like the Raptors announcers, you know, Devlin yeah. and um and Jack Armstrong. It's like they're very you know hometown guys, like um they're in the Raptors' favor, but. Um, yeah you can tell but still they're not as bad as those boston guys no there's only a couple teams that have favorites and it's boston and i feel like I feel like um washington from time to time and then like the canadian guys just hate literally everyone like they just will they'll be like yep they just scored yeah well it's funny <laughs> because when you go on the radio like you can go through yeah. like to different radio stations and um like find the boston channel or the philadelphia channel or the buffalo channel and you just listen to that channel's like announcers for the radio because they're hired by the team to do the radio game for like the for the city right so they're very like biased it's so funny to listen to it's like you can listen to it and like the rangers will score on the flyers and the flyers announcer will be like oh you know that was a lucky goal and uh you know, uh, what's his name? Should I have that? But uh, it's, it's whatever. Um, it was a decent goal. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about uh, hockey news as well, Buffalo Sabres finally won a game. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. Eric's mad about it, but yeah, I'm pretty mad. That's fine. Yeah. But Elliot played like all oh, hot garbage on fire. Yeah. Well, Carter Hart wouldn't have been any better. So <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, but I guess that'll wrap it up. If, unless you guys have any anything else you want to say? No. no? 
All right. Well, Leafs win three one, move to first place in the North for the foreseeable future. They stay future. In, in first place. Start. Pardon. Stay in first place. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If they lost, they would have moved down. So yes, but, but I, they, uh, they they kept their spot uh, as first place. So. Yeah, and Jack Campbell moved to seven zero and zero. So that that'll do it. Uh, thank you guys for watching the buds in the box on YouTube or listening on Spotify. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment which jersey you want. The giveaway is free, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.